Major breaking news coming to us right now from Baltimore, Maryland, and this is what we know. I want to put up this tweet here from my colleague at Live Now, Josh Breslow. Update, Mayor Brandon Scott says the body of the third Key Bridge victim has been recovered. Uh, Scott says this evening the Unified Command announced that divers were able to bring Maynard Yasser Suazo Sandoval, one of the remaining missing workers, home to his family. Uh, and so this is a very just tragic, tragic update here. Uh, but we know a little bit more dive teams have recovered the body of a third victim there in the bridge collapse. Officials say the body of 38-year-old Maynard Yasser Suazo Sandoval was recovered around 10.30 this morning. The two construction workers who were recovered last week have been identified, remember, as 35-year-old Alejandro Hernandez Fuentes of Baltimore and 26-year-old Dorleon Ronial Castillo Cabrera of Dundalk. Their bodies were found inside of a red pickup truck submerged about 25 feet deep in the water in the middle of the Patapsco River. Uh, so Unified Command salvage dive teams located what they believe to be the missing construction worker as well and notified the Maryland Department of State Police. Dive teams from the Maryland State Police, underwater recovery team, and other law enforcement partners then recovered Suazo Sandoval as well. And you can see uh, we've been showing you these scenes all throughout the course of what now, a week and a half. Uh, sometimes the weather is very inclement, very choppy, very dangerous for these divers who have been working around the clock uh, to look for uh, these missing individuals, uh, of course, who were uh, long ago presumed dead in the wake of the bridge collapse. They were working on the bridge, filling potholes at the time of the collision with the MV Dolly into the Francis Scott Key Bridge. And I have to add, remember, three more bodies still remain unaccounted for. Uh, the third body uh, found just this morning. Uh, and so we send our thoughts and our condolences there to the victim's family and friends. Hopefully uh, this tragic update offers some semblance of closure today. This coming on the very day President Joe Biden toured the collapse site and scene there as well. Many reporters were on the scene for that, including Fox's Rebecca Castor. We want to get her report, her summary on the president's trip there to Baltimore today. As crews work to clear the tons of debris from last week's bridge collapse, President Biden is renewing his support for the city of Baltimore. Your nation has your back, and I mean it. Your nation has your back. President Biden doubling down on his commitment for the federal government to spend whatever it takes to reopen the port of Baltimore. On Friday, he toured the site of that deadly bridge collapse and later met with the relatives of six construction workers who died. I know a little bit about what it's like to lose piece of your soul to get that phone call in the middle of the night to say family members of God, I've been there. The Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsed last Tuesday after a cargo ship struck one of the support beams. The president is now urging Congress to quickly authorize federal funds to rebuild the structure, which some experts estimate could cost at least $2 billion. No matter anyone's affiliation, public, private, federal, state, local, Democrat, Republican, we are all one team here. For now, most operations at the port are still shut down, and officials say that's costing millions in lost revenue every day and upending the supply chain. The Army Corps of Engineers expects to open a limited access channel to allow larger cargo ships to flow in and out by the end of April. The legal fallout, though, could last years. A lot of parties are going to want to present claims and uh, make sure someone that knows what they're doing uh, gets a hold of your case. In a federal court filing, the ship's owner and operator denied fault and asked that any liability be capped at $43 million. In Baltimore County, Maryland, Rebecca Castor, Fox News. Rebecca, thanks so much. Great reporting as always. In the meantime, we want to bring into the conversation our friend, global shipping analyst and expert, Sal Mercogliano. He has guided us through this story and helped us make sense of it. He joins me on this Friday night. Um, Sal, thanks for being with us. It's good to see you here. Uh, you're coming on right now uh, on this uh, occasion of the breaking news that we just brought to our viewers uh, that a third body has been recovered there from the depths of the Patapsco River. Uh, just your quick thoughts on that. I mean, this is taking quite a while. They still need to find three individuals who remain unaccounted for, Sal. 
Yeah, I think we always need to remember that this is a recovery operation, you know, at the forefront. And while we talk about opening channels and removing the dolly, that forefront for those divers down there is trying to find the loved ones of those who have been lost. So, and again, you know, they're dealing in a very perilous situation down below. You saw the diver going in. They have umbilicals attached to them. It is extremely hazardous diving conditions in there. And so I think they need to be really careful. And, and you know, finding a body is obviously going to stop all work and they're going to bring it back. We saw very similar issues when uh, we were seeing the recovery and, and the salvage in the Twin Towers back in 2001. Yeah, you know, Sal, let's get to uh, some of the details about the debris removal, how that's going. Uh, I know you've been following it very closely here. Uh, I want to put up uh, something that, that you tweeted, this photo, that really kind of just captures the magnitude of the destruction to the ship itself. Uh, you said it's enormous on the bow. The starboard bow has been ripped open and a huge gouge due to the impact with the bridge. I mean, how have you heard debris removal is coming? Is it a slow and laborious process, or have they made some headway? Yeah, I mean, it is slow. I mean, you can only cut the size of a piece of metal that you can lift with the cranes you have on there. So obviously, if you're working with 1,000-ton cranes, 500-ton cranes, or smaller cranes, you have to limit the size. And I think we, we forget the scale of this. You know, when people go out and see it, and I've talked to a lot of people now that have been out on the scene, and when you see it, you know, the, the image doesn't quite convey it because you don't get a, really a size perspective there. But again, it is enormous. Each of those little boxes in the upper left corner is a shipping container the size of a tractor trailer going down a road. So that when you look at the amount of material and steel here that has to be removed, it really is a daunting task. task. And when the Army Corps of Engineers announced that they're going to hope to get a, you know, kind of a medium-sized channel open by the end of April, that's extremely optimistic. All right, yeah, Sal, I want to talk about that timetable here. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers putting that out in their statement just yesterday. I want to put up this tweet here uh, saying that they have developed a tentative timeline to reopen the Fort McHenry Channel following the bridge collapse. I want to read from the press release that they put out, Sal, and get you to comment. They say this, that they expect to open a limited access channel 280 feet wide and 35 feet deep to the port of Baltimore within the next four weeks by the end of April. They say this channel would support one-way traffic in and out of the port of Baltimore for barge container service and some roll-on, roll-off vessels that move automobiles and farm equipment to and from the port. Uh, engineers are aiming to reopen the permanent 700-foot wide by 50-foot deep federal navigation channel by the end of May, restoring the port to normal capacity. So um, do you think the end of April for a partial kind of thoroughfare and the end of May for the full thoroughfare, do you think that's ambitious? I, I think April is doable for the narrow channel because what you're talking about is removing those large trestle-like features we're seeing above the water and just below. So those cuts are what they could target and they can do. And again, they're looking to open about a very narrow little channel through. The larger ambition is you have to remove everything that's on the bottom. Remember, the channel depth is 50 feet. So what we have sitting on top of the 50-foot depth is the entire bridge structure. And Port of Baltimore is a deep draft port. It had 50-foot draft before the really big expansion took place because what comes out of Baltimore are large coal carriers. Those are big, heavy vessels. And to get those channels open, they have got to move. Uh, I think April is doable, but as you see here in the weather, the weather in springtime in Baltimore is very, un you know, <laughs> unforgiving. And, and when you have that happen, it's going to be very difficult to maintain any sort of schedule. I think they get the channel open within a few weeks. I think about four weeks, five weeks, they can open that. But the deeper draft channel is going to be a, a huge challenge. You know, Sal, for clarification purposes, is any traffic transiting through the channel right now, any commercial traffic at all? I've watched uh, on, on, you know, uh, traffic apps yeah. and the little traffic is going through. We're just seeing a few tugs and barges right now going through. So it's pretty minimal what's moving in and out of the port. Okay. What is happening but over at Trade Point, this is the area just outside the port, is we are seeing vessels going in there. We're seeing a shifting of vessels in and out of that area. And there is talk about starting a shuttle service of maybe moving some containers and some cargo up from other ports from Baltimore or Philly and start using 
using that channel, you know, shifting cargo onto tugs and barges and at least getting them into Baltimore to get some work at some of the terminals. Yeah. I want to put up this tweet here just lastly, Sal. Uh, President Biden, of course, visiting today. He got an aerial tour uh, of the site itself. What has been your overall impression of kind of the federal and state response to this to the debris removal, uh, to kind of unlocking federal and state funds to get all of this back up and running. Uh, just kind of your overall impression. Uh, you know, I've seen a lot of funding being released, which is great. I mean, money is always the big issue uh, for an operation of this scale. The issue, of course, is you have multiple issues going on here. You've got a ship salvage. You've got the bridge in the main channel. You've got the rest of the bridge you have to worry about. We've seen Governor Moore kind of being the leader here and coming out and leading this charge. It seems as if everybody is working. The problem is we're focusing on just a couple of key points right now, and I'm not 100 percent sure we have all the resources we need in the area, not just to deal with moving the ship, but also to start getting that cargo flowing. Yeah, you could just see. I mean, the, this photo the White House put out is just stunning. I mean, and from what I understand, the crew of the MV Dolly, they're still on board. They are. They're operating the vessel because, again, we may need the vessel's crew to help and assist once the vessel is freed to back the vessel out. You have to keep that vessel operating. You have to keep it stable. Uh, it can't be shifting. Again, th there's 4,000 tons of bridge lying across the bow. And when those divers are in the water, you can't have that ship shifting at all. So, again, they're, they're, this is a very intricate operation with many parts, uh, you know, layered on it. Yeah. I'm, again, always fascinated by the fact that we haven't seen the naming of a national incident commander to be really the point person on this. Oh, wow. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, Sal Mercagliano, as always, thanks so much for your insight. Have a good weekend, Sal. Thank you for having me, Andrew.